Hello and welcome to Oslo Podcast episode 97. My name is Kara Colossus uh, and we're going to be talking about the OPL final this week uh, as well as patch 5.15 and to help me with that I've got Stephen Gaston. Hello. And Victor Bradley. Good evening. Um, yes, so we theoretically start at 7pm Australian Eastern Standard Time on a Wednesday. We started at 25 past because we're rebels and we'll do what we like. Um, but you can join us on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Podcast. Don't forget, there's also a bunch of other shows that uh, are on our network, the Trinity Force Network. So there's the T-Force uh, proper, which is twice a week. Uh, the T-Force LCS Rundown, there's the T uh, the Four Wards podcast, there's also the Trinity Force RPG group, uh, and all of these things are streamed on Twitch, and then I think people do solo kill and stuff as well, which actually I'll probably be doing once my new RAM arrives and I'll actually be able to stream games on my computer. Um, Hooray for RAM! Yeah, RAM, woo! And you've graphics card, but that doesn't really matter because it's League. But um, <laughs> theoretically, I can play other stuff as well. Um, anyway, so you should... Uh, subscribe to this channel and then you'll get all the updates of when things go live and yeah all the great content that we put out um yes and uh, i think that's probably about it oh, i should probably make mention the patreon so the the trinity force patreon still going on if you want to get access to exclusive champion slick podcast uh where they've talked about morgana they've talked about aurelia they've talked about corky uh and there was another one as well i think nunu yeah yeah, yeah. The Corky one would be really uh, relevant in the meta at the moment. Mm. Corky's considered quite powerful at the moment. Yeah, yep. they try to keep them relevant in terms of what's really strong and playable at the moment. Yep. Take that how mm. you like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they also get, I think they get people who are sort of solo queue, like played a lot of Masters, that champion solo queue. Yeah. yeah, so um, they're really great podcasts. You should, if, and if you want to get access to them, it is to pledge to the $10 level uh, on the Patreon. Uh, and of course there's other things that you can pledge for, including, um, yeah, a whole bunch of different rewards. So there's, um, there's the opportunity to come on the Oslo oh, podcast yes. for a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Or one of the other Trinity Force shows, that, um, uh, uh, discussing, discussing LCS seems to be the popular one to jump on the rundown. Mm. And, uh, it's interesting that, uh, Ranconius decided to not take advantage of that hundred dollar deal that we were providing <laughs> to him for free tonight yep. yeah so th tonight was meant to be Ranconius's last uh last show with us uh but he couldn't make it so yeah we want to which, which pretty much sums up everything what it's been like with <laughs> just scott for the last few months just... classic scott <laughs> yeah classic scott it. um but i mean that's because he's, he's moved on to uh, bigger and brighter things so and um... we wish him the best of luck in his future endeavors yeah that's it, absolutely. So, um, and pretty much like everybody else who've been a host on our show, they're always welcome back when they're. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's good stuff for Scott. So yes, that was actually an open invitation for Way to come back and be the fourth host. <laughs> it's been a couple of years. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, I've lost my track train of thought. All right, let's Joe, talk about the appeal final. Give us money on the tired. Patreon. Oh yeah, the Patreon. Spend money on Patreon. So. Um, and maybe eventually they'll, they'll pay for us to go to the, uh, the OPL finals and we can do some videos and stuff. Um, at 5,000, <laughs> yeah, like, like 5,000 or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there was brief mentions of us going to America. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, actually there's, there's also I should make mention, I think the $50 level is like a coaching session a month. Yeah, you um, get coaching sessions normally with Horse Doctor, who is a um, resident master player in yeah. uh, the T Force network. So, to a lot of people, that means uh, big things, you know, yes. getting coached by a master player. Because yeah. normally, like, if you go onto a website like, uh, I don't know, LOL Coaching or whatever, like, you go for a master player, it cost you uh, quite the fortune for their time. So, mm. uh, it's a pretty, pretty good deal if you pay through us. And of course, you support the show, which helps. All right, well, let's talk about the OPL final. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I think a nice transition from us talking about the network into the OPL finals was that uh, that Corky had a hundred percent win rate. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, did you want to go through the, the games? And, yeah, uh, yeah. So, and so talk the, about the scores. Of course, the spoilers. Of as per always. There uh, are no spoilers. We've been building up to this for ages. <laughs> we haven't watched it yet. 
Yeah, you've, yeah. Shame on you. Shame, Shame on you. Shame, Shame on you, Ranconian. Um, <laughs> so Chiefs won 3-1. Uh, so they won games uh, one and two and then game four. And Legacy, uh, of course, won game three. So, um, And then inevitably lost the last game. Yes. Yeah. Legacy. Yes. <laughs> Where where you bring the party down, man? Yeah. No, do you want to um, think, think about it? No. Game, well, uh, well, you, you, you can't lose a game about... that never got played, so game five doesn't count. Duh. Yeah. Um. Uh, the event itself, like we all watched uh, the stream. Yep. Uh. Well, no, Victor, did you say you were there? No, actually, Jason at the was, event. That's Jason right. was there live, and he's sitting mm. next to me. Um, Jason, how was the live event? <laughs> It was absolutely insane, and everyone on the Twitch chat was saying that it was super cringeworthy. I thought it was really good, and the production level for live events has really stepped up, I'd have to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally well, I, agree I, with that. I didn't get to see the Twitch stream, I watched the YouTube stream, okay. and it was perfectly fine. Um, yeah. it, was, uh, it was quite good. Now, uh, the, the atmosphere at the actual event, from what we could tell, looked amazing. Mm. Uh, the, the, the entire Big Top was completely packed now that's as we said a couple of uh a while ago that the all the tickets were sold out within a few minutes of yep. them becoming available so yeah. i think uh i mean it's like four thousand that... people it was like four or five thousand people went to a live league of legends event like specifically to a live league of legends event in australia like that's huge yeah for, and um, for us, yeah. so well, cons considering, like, I mean, sorry, just to interrupt again, like, considering that when you look at some of the stadiums they play out in Europe and stuff, it's like 15,000. And you think, well, mm. that's for, you know, I mean, Europe, um, that's, you know, Germany or France or whatever. So, you know, we're talking about much bigger places with heaps more people who play, uh, you know, play League of Legends in that area. So to, to actually completely sell out a huge venue like that in Australia is actually kind of, you know, kind of a big deal. Um, considering yeah. that previously, like last year, it was it, they held these finals in addition to PAX or Supernova. Yeah. So you had crowds, you had maybe, f you know, 500 people there. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, I just thought I was thinking about that now, it's quite, quite a big deal. Uh, yeah. Huge step up. Yeah, no, it was, it was completely packed there. The crowd was uh, going nuts, you could tell. The casters were like so hyped. Uh, yep. Atlas has got probably, not going to be able to talk properly for about two weeks after that. I think he was so so into it. If you if you've uh, if you've not seen the vods, I watch it just for that. Just is the, the the enthusiasm that Atlas brought to yeah. it. Mm. I, I've been saying it for a long time. Atlas is like the best hype caster in the world. Like <laughs> you can't get much better than him in terms of hype casting. He, 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 he's, he's certainly good. brought an element. I mean, they all did a great job. They had that kind of analysis desk thing going on. With um, Alex. which looked about yeah. they were sitting in like minus and four minus. degree weather because uh, <laughs> they were outside it was it was kind of cool that they actually had it outside because you could see like you could see a ferris, ferris wheel, wheel in the background yeah. and stuff and you could yeah. see see the harbor um so to actually but you know i mean uh, <laughs> some of them looked like that about five layers on because it, it well heck it was freezing cold here so I, I, imagine... I particularly like the news report done by the project where um they interviewed radia and under radia's name it said radia legacy esports no <laughs> really oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious wow um, <laughs> i've i've got uh i've got like the, the press release here where it's like it was like they're on channel 7 news twice and they were on channel 10's the project and they were like a, a whole bunch of magazines and newspapers mm. and all that sort of stuff so i've got like a million links to check out on that still uh but yeah, no, the project's oh, it's, it's at the top of the list, so yeah. that'll be the first one I check out. That's that's hilarious. And just to go to the production value side of things, like the like it actually looked like the, what they do when they have the big LCS games. Like you could see behind mm. the cast is they had all the people. So it was, I guess, it's I mean, the studio is awesome, and having the, the sort of where they can have the games and all that, like that's great. But to actually have it, I basically set up in the same way that the LCS would have it. Was, yeah. was actually kind of nice like it's kind of like yeah. we're actually part of a big thing that you know because yeah like we're, we're not just sort of a sideshow to another event at PAX or whatever this is the main event and right I guess treated it accordingly and that was great I thought yeah yeah absolutely and the the whole packed arena um thing like I think they could have had an even larger crowd 
uh, and still packed out that arena. Uh, so, yeah, I think that just means really, really big things for the Oceanic League of Legends scene. I think that's a really, really good show. Mm. Yeah, we're going to get bigger arenas every year. And, you know, j like how quickly the tickets sold out for this one are going to sell out just as quickly for the next one. That is including the people who... You want something to say? Apparently, Sydney Opera House. <laughs> Sydney Opera House. Which is on well, that would be that would be cool. Um, my my informant ninja tells me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think a the whisper one, in the wind has told me. One of the I think one of the virtues of Lunar Park though is that they it was part of a big like they didn't just have the APL final like they had other stuff as well. They had a community events and you know obviously it's Lunar Park so you can go on all the rides and have so it, what I kind of what have would have enjoyed had I gone like I bought the ticket to do. To do was like it's it's part of a whole day of fun and i think that's kind of neat um yeah, where it's not just going to well i mean it's it's coming to play the game it's coming to watch the game yeah. but also there's stuff to do there as well the community games like i don't know some cosplay contest maybe they do yeah and i think they even had like you know they had developers talking and stuff we have uh, someone who was there right here so yeah it could could be a good option to utilize your assets so there was a lot of thank you I, I'm, I'm now victor i'm now victor guys yeah uh, so there was a lot of uh, really cool events going on at the day. They had a giant booth set up that um, it was like a community hall where they had different activities going all day from Riot QA sessions, player QA sessions, and uh, cosplay show-off competitions. Mm. Plus there was a little area to the very back where they actually had all League of Legends type uh, things to do. Like they had a uh, like six pin bowling, but it was called Ramus Powerball. And if you won that, you got cool lanyards and wristbands. And that was how they gave out most mm. of their swag for the event. That's there cool. was some really cool um, things to do, and overall, it was just a brilliant day. Mm. Back to Victor. <laughs> Victor's got ugly all of a sudden. Respect the hat. Yeah, um, just on that dynamic where there's like a million things to do. Uh, that's there's two sides to that. Like, uh, I would definitely love to go to a, just a league only uh, kind of thing where I can dedicate all my time. Because when I went to uh, the Penny Arcade Expo or PAX, uh, the last two years, I would spend about 95% of my time at the Riot booth, whether mm. there was community events, like like getting up to go to the lunch and such, was, you know, oh my goodness, I'm going to miss something. But also, I'm missing absolutely everything else at the at the expo. Yep. So, like, it'd be like, okay, between the community games and between the, the upcoming finals, they're going to be doing a swag giveaway. I have enough swag. I'm going to go out and, uh, and I'm going to look at some of the other things like that. So I think the, the specialization is very important. Mm. Um, you know, like at, at Penny Arcade uh, Expo, it's really easy to get distracted with all sorts of other things and everything. Don't mind, which is actually why I'm, I'm looking forward to Penny Arcade Expo this year because I'll actually be able to do those things that I've yeah, missed yeah. out on the last two years because otherwise I would have been just spending all my time at the Riot booth. So. Well, see, for me, I don't care about something like PAX. Like, I, I wouldn't go to PAX. I wouldn't go to Supernova. So for me, it's great because it means I can just go and see the thing I actually only care about rather than mm. having to go through all these stalls and yeah. you know, have all well, this other stuff that I'm just like, what do I care about any of this? Yeah. Um, well, and that's it. Like, I, I went to the very first PAX mm. for League of Legends. Yep. And I booked a second one for League of Legends also. Yeah. But there was also, I realized after the first time that there was so many other things that I wanted to do there that I probably wouldn't get the time to do. So, um, and vice versa, if I was doing something else, what am I missing out at the League of Legends booth? So, no, I like that idea. I mean, what I actually think would love to see Riot do, because, um, I mean, uh, the Worlds is great and it's a huge showcase for League of Legends, but it's... I think they're really missing something like a riot con. I know, I know Blizzard do their BlizzCon and you know all this sort of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. like having having something where it's not not competitive, but it's for the fans. And I guess what we saw with the the you know all that time at Luna Park is that you kind of had a bit of that as well. Like you had Q and As, like mm. you know, and you had like, and I guess with something like a bigger proper riot con, you could reveal champions, they can reveal new features, like it can be kind of a center to the to the regular players kind of experience. Um, yeah, well, Blizzard developed multiple games so they can have, like, this huge thing that does, like, you know, you've got, like, the StarCraft stuff on here and you've got the... Yeah. Uh, you've got the uh, Heart of the Swarm, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. They've got that on there and they've got this other superhero with guns, first-person shooter, role-playing yeah. game. <laughs> like, it's a weird yeah, game. They I normally... Like, they I normally watched the last BlizzCon. Yes. 
they normally have on and off years, like years that are kind of like, we're not really doing anything right now. Yeah. And then there are the on years, which is like, oh my God, we're announcing this expansion yeah. for World of Warcraft and here comes what you've been waiting for, StarCraft 2, and here's our yeah. Overwatch area and oh my God, we've got a new expansion coming to Hearthstone. Mm. But I mean, you can have like plenty of panels and Q and A's. Like, there's lots of stuff going oh, on, yeah. even just with League of Legends, um, and, and and some of the stuff that they do do, kind of on the like at some of these shows. Because I mean, Riot has booths. They'll probably have a booth at PAX, and they'll have they have booths that well, they say in the US they at PAX East, and you know, SummerCon and all this sort of stuff. They have like where they have like an art demo, and they have these sorts mm. of things. Like, I guess something where it's streamed on Twitch, though, something really big, where you can have. You know, you can kind of have everything bigger and better, and you know, have those have sort of bigger reveals. Like, I guess so add some momentum to the, the to the yeah. casual players' experience. Like, because everything for the competitive leads to this big thing in October, you know, mm-hmm. November, or whatever. Like, it leads to worlds, and that's like a big peak in the experience of the the LCS watcher. It'd be also nice to ha- kind of have that with the year, where instead of just kind of dribs and drabs through the years, where things just happen and things just turn up. Like, right can actually work towards this big reveal and this big weekend where you can kind of be excited for this as a fan of the game, not just as a competitive fan of the game. Yeah, that's and then true. we can like, get an Oslo booth, a booth. That's and a it. Yeah. Booth, and, yeah. and there'll be like a big surrender at 20 booth. <laughs> and Moobit will just be there like, oh yeah, Riot announced this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That panel over there. And if you can go here, um, Riot are <laughs> just about to announce this Darius rework. And That's if, that's if he doesn't quit. He like quit for a little bit. Not that long ago, Dude, maybe. Right. Moobot would just be the info desk. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's. We've talked about the the event. Let's talk about the games. So, um, how do we? Yeah. What are what are people's thoughts about the games? The games themselves. Like, how do people Elise, feel? Chiefs and Legacy go. Elise has a one hundred percent pick ban rate right? in all four <laughs> games, which makes me smile because, as you know, I'm a massive Elise fan. Yep. Um, uh, I think she was banned three games and picked once. Mm. and that game it was it game two with chiefs yeah game two uh and chiefs just she rocked got, that she got picked by the chiefs because legacy left her open and the yeah first like, oh yeah like yeah he's not gonna he, he does not want to play against that champion so obviously he's picked her did they did they ban <laughs> at greg i'm trying to remember did they ban at gragas instead because i never i never uh, really ever paid attention to i think callista got no, banned Gragas and that was through. the question i think callista was the only questionable ban legacy made because they were like oh radio doesn't really play yeah much you don't really want to let radio have have callista he is pretty pretty amazing though he picked lucian yeah i'm not i don't know why he did that but anyway that was no, game well, three they, they, it was quite clear that uh, the only priority that either team put on uh, the AD carries was uh, first pick Sivia by Chiefs on yep. blue side. Uh, other yep. than that, it was support jungle, support jungle, uh, mid lane, s- severe first pick by Legacy in the fourth game. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So severe was a big, uh, big contender. Corky also was high on people's priorities mm-hmm. list as well. Um, Oriana made it in. I was very, uh, I was ecstatic to see that in game four. Uh, oh. She went big. Oh my she gosh, some and serious the wombos. For that was they camped the crap out of mid lane like yeah. for so long. There was like, just, we are getting Oriana ahead. Just just let it happen, like yeah, it's gonna that, was, happen. <laughs> that was what Chief seemed to be saying. Spooks has just set up a tent in that mid lane. He's like, we're getting Oriana ahead. And the yeah. damage she was putting out by It was game. so gross. Was crazy. The yeah. shockwaves were like two-thirding people's health. It was beautiful. And, and of course, Al- um, Ejim was an Alistair, and he's just an amazing Alistair. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, when so... well, he first picked Alistair that game. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, seriously, game one, four, if you want to see some great wombos... Like, just absolutely sick wombos. There's, like, I think uh, there was one in particular where you got, like, a four-man wombo just sort of next to the, the blue camp, like, the on the sort of the other side yeah. of the blue blue buff yeah. on um, blue side. And it was just amazing. Like, I just remember watching you just go, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's, uh, what's interesting was th- there was a bit of priority on Braum by Legacy in Game 3, the, uh, the game that they won. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to think was... He got picked on, in game was... two as well by Chiefs, I think, didn't he? Yeah, well, he was picked by Legacy first uh, in game one. Uh, he was picked, no, I think... No, he made it through game two. He was first picked by Legacy in game three. 
uh, and he was picked by... So Legacy put a very high priority on Braum, uh, and it sort of paid off, but the... <laughs> the if you watch Game 3, just the start of it, like, just Lee Sin wanting to kill someone. It didn't matter if he died in the process. He was trying absolutely everything. It was like this 3v3 very early in the mid lane. Uh, just constantly. And he's going in on such low health. And it's like, there's no way they could possibly follow off on that. What are you yeah. doing? so greedy but it ended up working out they got first blood and did not trade a death for it mm -hmm. uh it was it was exciting it was really exciting just uh and at that, that point we had a, a big uh uh legacy legacy yeah. chat yes. going on too it was amazing well that game in particular was like a totally different team so the first few games they got pummeled pretty pretty hard especially i think game yeah. one they just got absolutely drilled um and you just i mean it Chiefs were completely in control. There was no point in any of those two previous games. Uh, I think I think in game two there was like maybe a period of time. It was a, it was a bit, bit, it was a bit even. Yeah. Um, right towards the end, and then Radio went like absolutely ham off his mm. freaking head and like charged forward with Severe. And absolutely, oh, that was, that was such a good engage. Yeah. Um, Legacy got a bit ambitious with their champ picks in number two or a bit creative with their champ uh, picks in number two in game two. And then they sort of cleaned them up a little bit. Uh, getting rid of Tom Kench and, and swapping in Shen and um, yeah. then they kind of cleaned them, cleaned it up a bit well, better. Uh, Legacy were the ones who got Shen, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Le Legacy I mean. went. Yeah, oh, sorry, I thought you said Chiefs. I'm like, what? No, yeah, Tom Kench uh, was my first competitive game seeing Tom Tam Kench in there. He's a bit weird competitively. Like that health bar shield mechanic that he's going on is able to save him from huge amounts of tower mm. dives. Uh, we saw like Tom Kench live through a lot of stuff, uh, but he didn't. He didn't do nearly as much as another champion in that role could have. So, I think uh, Legacy going all in on Tom Kench might have been a mistake. But you know, mm. well, especially I mean, Swiper went right, uh, went uh, Fizz in that game in that yeah. first game, and he just. He just thrashed him. Uh, wasn't that game two? Wasn't Fizz game two? Mm, whatever the yeah, game was, two. like yeah, yeah, game two. Game yeah, game okay. Two, then, yeah. It, then it, it was the game that they picked Tom Kench. Yeah, I think the, it, that was game two. They also picked Tom Kench. Like Minky yeah. picked. Yeah, um, Fizz does not um, give a shit about health bars. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, it, Swiper was. I mean, he did incredibly in game two. Um. Yeah, I mean, what, what were some of the individual highlights that people had? I mean, for me, that was that Radio engage in game two. So they basically had the situation where uh, uh, Legacy were pushing down mid. Um, you know, it was basically at the, the inhibitor turret for, for Legacy's inhibitor turret. And Legacy sort of came up past the wolf camp. And they were look, both sides were sort of trying to try to get in a position to engage. And then Radio just like charges in, like goes... For, like. He doesn't go 5v1 because everybody else was there, but basically he kind of led the way and he just, like, just, slapped, like, came them all. That was one of my favorite yeah. bits. Uh, well, I've got... Uh, well, there's there's two that I want to kind of... One we've already talked about, mm. which was the Alistair and Oriana combo. Um, that, oh my god, that... The, the Oriana uh, combo with anyone who's got kind of a gap closer has always been a really impressive staple in competitive League of Legends. Oriana comes in and out of favor, and with the reworks to all the AP items, it's obvious that she's viable once again. Um, so it was really good. And we know EGM, Alistair, are extraordinaire. Like, I think Alistair got a ban every game. He got banned game one, yep, game two. Did. Uh, he didn't get banned or picked in game three, but game four, uh, he was first picked by the Chiefs. And uh, he put... He put the he put their name to the test and just yeah. destroyed the uh, legacy. My my ninja is telling me that his favorite part was hearing uh, Egypt yelling louder than Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> is such things possible? Yeah. The uh, the other the other moments. Well, it wasn't really a moment. It was more of a series of strategic decisions by Chiefs in game one with Twisted Fate. Um, just his destinies. I think there was one that was not perfect. The rest were all just spot on. You know, you've got no escape. I've got complete vision on you. Every single one was done at a time where it was strategically important. Uh, and it was done all on, on incredibly clever warding. So they knew that if they used Destiny at this exact moment, they would get full vision and would be able to make a decision. And they made the teleport decisions 
uh, correctly. And almost every single, like, watch game one again and just watch every single Destiny um, and you'll you'll see it pay off massively. Mm. There was, like, one where he tell like he teleported into the enemy red buff and it, and it kind of all went horribly wrong because there was, like, the champion that was, like, one auto attack away from death. I'm trying to remember which one it was, but uh, it was just so much strategic play from that twisted fate yeah so that that was my don't give yeah. swiffer twisted fate it's gonna end up <laughs> badly for you i don't know why people yeah. let him have it it's just oh well what what can't you not let swiffer i was have? gonna say like well, yeah <laughs> like i feel like we say this about every oh yeah don't give spooks a lease don't mm. give swiffer this champion well, I mean, give... what was it he had in game three i think it was lulu maybe we should i'm trying three, to think what he had in game yeah, three the yeah, Lulu. Yeah. yeah. Lulu. You know, that wasn't that scary. I mean, I know it can be, I guess, but I mean it's, 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 I mean, it's, I, mean it's a, I mean it's a Lulu pick. She's not really there to stomp your head in. She's mm. more there to make sure everyone else yeah. can stomp your head in. Yeah. Well, there was this has actually brought me something back to something that I I was talking about on the day but haven't really brought up today. Was they had the analysis desk on there and it was brilliant presentation. As you said, they were very cold, uh, yep. and you could see their hands kind of trembling and stuff. It was, it was like, oh, you poor guys, you're working your heart off there. We love you for it. But there was um, my personal love of the game comes from uh, the strategic level uh, and the uh, the picks and bands, uh, synergy composition, uh, all of that sort of stuff. So that's the stuff that I really love, and that sort of analysis was a little bit lacking there uh, on, on the night, I would say. Um, that I really felt that there was a lot more, like a lot more that could have been said about the compositions. Um, like that, for example, the Alistair, um, Ariana pick, like that combo is, is godlike, uh, but it didn't get much conversation because they were talking about more play by play stuff. And like, I, I, I'm kind of griping about a very small thing that appeals to me specifically, but I like it, it's, it's really important. Um, like there's, uh, Chiefs had Gragas and Janna um, as kind of their first picks into Braum in Game 3. And it's like, well, Braum's not a big initiator. Why are we going with, like, huge disengages against the first with Braum? Like, and I feel that that could have had a bit more uh, discussed about it during the games because I think it adds a lot to it. Maybe it's something they should look into a bit more. Hmm. You say, uh, well, it's, we... well, it was still a really good presentation. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but that, like, there's this, like Monte Cristo is kind of like a world-renowned specialist at that sort of stuff. Like he's really good at that particular field, and they touch on that stuff a lot in the LCS uh, as well, but not so much in the, in the fresher regions. And I think there was a lot of clever compositional uh, science that went on. Uh, over the during the finals and in the lead up to it, obviously, that I don't think we were given credit for, and I just I kind of want to give a shout out oh. to everybody who's kind of funneling that that power. Cool. Um, Vic, do you have any particular highlights you want to make mention of? Or uh, I just like the way because um, Legacy kind of come into the first game and they slumped a little bit and they weren't really all together and just got um, steamrolled. And then sort of watching them sort of pick themselves better and better across the second game and then into the third game where they finally flip the switch and right from the beginning they hit it. And uh, I think I still think it's interesting in the third game there were still moments where Chiefs still looked really strong, like uh, during that Baron, one of the Baron plays mm. where the home guard um, Hecarim comes bolting in and just shakes everything up and it's like, oh my God, Chiefs can come back now. Oh, yeah. it's... <laughs> It's happening again. Well, uh, again, I just want to point out that game one, I think, was uh, really down to the excellent use of Twisted Fate's Destiny. Mm. And then that they they followed Carrot's advice and banned him every other game yeah. <laughs> to make sure that he didn't get him. So, um, like, we, like, I don't think it's really fair to say game one was such a stomp and Legacy dropped the ball on that one. Like, because once once that snowball is is rolling it's almost impossible to stop and especially with the really good composition that chiefs had in game one like there was just like uh legacy had uh braum azir cogmore nunu and aurelia uh not necessarily in that order but um there's not much that composition can do 
once Twisted Fate gets ahead, like even if they won every other single lane, Twisted Fate can turn any one of those lanes around. And yeah, there's a lot of difficulty in trying to repair the damage that uh, that Twisted Fate is doing. So um, I want to give Legacy a bit, a bit of credit in for g game one, even though it was a fairly decisive victory. Um, it, it's not just as a Legacy didn't show up for game one. I just no. I I, re I really want to stress that, like, because it was it was a really competitive game. Yeah. And Chiefs are just as we've said a million times. Once they get a lead. They know exactly how to pick an enemy yeah. apart. And, and that's where, that, just... where Legacy did so well in Game 3 is they actually managed to stop... They actually played really well in the early game. They dominated the early game and that enabled them to keep Chiefs down through the rest of the game. Mm. Um, yeah. And, well, I remember... I mean, I that's, remember they're the only one who have taken... In this entire se entire split, they're the only ones who have taken a game off... One of only two teams to take a game off Chiefs. Mm -hmm. um, like, that's... The entire yeah. year. Yeah, the entire year. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, in the finals, Shen 100% win rate legacy. Yeah. <laughs> Shen has 100% win rate against the Chiefs. That's that's the statistics <laughs> right there. <laughs> Didn't make that up. <laughs> Maybe we should all go home Fun and use that, children. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, hopefully no one all competing in the international wild cards is actually going to listen to this podcast and pick Shen against the Chiefs. Because <laughs> uh, we might lose to Turkey again. Yeah. Well, actually, speaking of Turkey, you should make mention that so the uh, the the wild so the international wildcard tournament um, for for the world finals it's uh, starts uh, in the 29th of August, so it's a good good couple of weeks away. Um, so yeah, two two four weeks away, three whole weeks away really, um, and also qualif having qualified the people who've also qualified, uh, Pain Gaming, Chaos Light and Gamers, Hard Random, uh, Detonation, Focus Me, and Dark Passage. Um, so yeah, a bunch of familiar, familiar names. names. Yeah. yeah. Though I'm not entirely sure that like looking at Dark Passage, I, I, it looks like they've changed their roster a bit. Like there, there was a couple of players on there last time, I think who, yeah, anyway, they might've changed as their roster. As long rosters. as they've still got T-Gun, there's still hope. Wait, who are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, the Southeast Asian team hasn't qualified yet. So anyway, so it looks like we'll be in a group stage with uh dark passage detonation focus me which is from japan um and whoever the southeast asian team is um so we're not up against latin america and brazil until i guess the semis or whatever come on oh, no baby, no that, actually no we won't for... grand finals no it looks like actually we were gonna have to play any of those guys well, that's awesome Dodge to the brazilians and the latin americans oh yeah <laughs> that's how we want to qualify by not going against the better teams <laughs> yeah we get to worlds who gives a crap if we get to worlds what does it matter well yes there's arguments to it does, does anybody really think <laughs> that any of the wildcard teams are really going to have a, a solid chance in at, at the actual world finals I don't think they're going to necessarily win um, no but I... even even winning a <laughs> single game yeah sure like not there's even always... just by fluke like how many, four not beat Chiefs. That's okay. four not beat Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Anything can happen in League of Legends, and Chiefs have been looking almost unstoppable this entire entire year. So I think they've got a good chance at even even if the odds are stacked against them of taking at least one game. You know, Legacy took one game off Chiefs again. Yeah, <laughs> I've just mentioned both of Chief's losses. That's <laughs> to make a point. Oh goodness! No, uh, yeah. I, I think I think we can we can take a couple. Like maybe not off the Korean teams. Like I think they're just going to be on the next level. But we've definitely got a chance against other regions. Okay, well I guess it depends like where which sort of bracket you get put in. So it's hard to that know. Is true. To, you know, yeah. If you end up in the, the there's always a bracket of death, and if you get mm -hmm. lumped in that, then you're in trouble. Yeah. What's really important is like showing off the individual skill of some players. Like if we get to showcase some fucking radio going mad ham Sandy in lane or something, then he like I don't know, stomps out double lift or something crazy like that and everyone's like, Oh my god, radio. Oh my god. Oh, I kinda wanna see Swiper like just just Trindamir it up. Just, yeah. <laughs> just completely just critting people for thousand two hundred all over the map. That's what I wanna see at well. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might see it, so Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk patch five point one five. 
Um, well, what time is it? Do we have time? We, we got 25 minutes. Do we have time to even start on a patch? <laughs> so, um... <laughs> We're just gonna... He's not gonna find their answer to that question. We got, 25, we got 25 minutes. What are you talking about? Do we? Yeah. Um... So, Fiora, we haven't actually talked about Fiora yet. She's been out s since the last patch. Anybody have any thoughts? I really like Fiora's hair. That's that's okay. my entire opinion on Fiora. Uh, she's got this really weird strut about her now, where she kind of like jumps a little bit after every step. Okay. And she's got this weird stride going on about her. So she's like in the Staying Alive video clip for the BGs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Are you actually going to read what her kit does? Uh, yeah. No, we I could we could do that. So basically, let me actually I need to bring up the patch four point one four notes, unless you have them on hand. Uh, give us a sec. Give us a sec. Well, there's actually like an entire champion update thing if you wanted to have a look at her. So Here, I'll post that link for you right there. I can't look the at Skype it. Chat. That's the problem. You can't look at it. No. Oh, of course. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe it's not. In, maybe it is one five. Oh my god. Okay. So everybody, Fiora's got this elite new passive right, which is called Duelist Stance. And what happens is, I Fiora will identify a vital spot on an enemy champion. This can be, if you if you split a champion into four into four quarters, that's where the vitals are in each uh, quarter of the champion. And are so, you doing visuals? I didn't have. <laughs> did you like do the whole thing on yes. webcam? Okay, yes, I did. Go. For our listeners so, out there, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so uh, that then these little and it'll, it'll bring up one little quadrant. And now, if she strikes that quadrant within fifteen seconds, it'll disappear. Uh, if she strikes that quadrant with a basic attack, uh, she can also hit it with her Q. Uh, then she will deal bonus damage equal to um, it's about three percent, but it scales with. Fiora's level, uh, 0 0.1 times Fiora's level, yep. and, and every 100 a bonus AD will also put an extra 1% on there, and that's equal to the target's maximum health in yep. true damage. So basically it starts off at like more or less 6% of maximum health and then scales up from there. Yep. Um, and then it gives her a little bit. It's bonus true damage as well, and it heals yes. her. And, and it gives her a true damage speed. being introduced this like the last couple of patches. Yeah. This is getting a bit scary. Yeah, well that I mean that's six percent max health true damage. That's a lot that's not a passive. And, <laughs> and, and, passive. and it you can't is... itemize against that, like, oh I'll build more HP. That's not gonna help you. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna that's do it. more damage. You know, you yeah. can't build armor. Doesn't do mm. anything. And, what the hell? Um, they'll they'll just keep popping up every so if if you're able to hit it every half second, they'll just keep popping up. Yeah. And you can just keep proccing it. Yeah. I feel movement speed is going to be incredibly crucial on her. Being able to position that while not yep. putting yourself into um, a, a phage disastrous first. situation. Uh, phage first is not a terrible idea on Fiora. Mm -hmm. uh, before going into Tiamat, uh, Tiamat and Hydra and then completing the Trinity Force. Um I, I'm not going to say that because Carrot will be really upset if I say Frozen Mallet. <laughs> not me, Adam. <laughs> Protophobia. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think Frozen Mount's a terrible item anyway. Um, it has uh, its uses, just... Yeah, definitely. Its gold okay. efficiency is definitely... Anyway, we're uh, getting sidetracked. Yeah. Lunge, <laughs> has, Lunge has seen a little bit of a change. So now rather than point, click, go straight to that target, and then in a few in within a couple seconds you can activate it again, now it's one dash. She will dash in the target direction, so you don't need a target to use it. And then she will strike um, the nearest target. And it will prioritize uh, champions, but also uh, vital spots. Yep. So if you dash to the right side of the champion where their vital is, she'll strike the vital. Yep. Assumably. I've played it before, and it's the vitals are really kind of uh, finicky and not easy to land, uh, hit because the hitboxes aren't perfect and if you're steve and if you're standing inside the person then she can't hit the vitals as well so they're not properly tuned um but yeah that that little stab she gets at the end of it that will um if she hits a champion the cooldown is reduced by 60 percent so she can use lunge pretty often considering at uh, lowest rank it's on an eight second cooldown and then they'll put it down to about three <laughs> Assuming she doesn't have any CDR on her. So that's pretty good. And uh, the physical damage, 
uh, starts at 65, goes up to 105, and scales, um, and then her the bonus AD scaling goes from uh, 55 up to 115% bonus AD. Just mm. <laughs> damage. I, I'm I, I'm quite liking this rework. I think it's a significant improvement. Like the the whole weakness, uh, like like you've got the four parts. Uh, one in the north hemisphere, south, east, and west, and you knock them down for the true damage that we've already discussed. Her ultimate puts up all four of them, and you do additional damage. Now, if you kill someone during that, I think they need to be. Uh, if you mark them with the ultimate, either yeah, killing you. them you've or got... all four uh, of the vitals, it will put a big circle of healing. And it's massive healing. A lot of healing. Mm. Start of at level healing. one, it's 80 per second, which scales by 60% of her bonus AD. And at rank three, it's 140 a second, plus mm. 60% of her bonus AD. Yep, it's pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. So, uh, and also, the, 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 her repost looks a lot better too. Yeah. I mean, by so, comparison, so Jana's Monsoon, it's 100 at level one and 200 at level three. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's comparable to Monsoon. Yes. Uh, Repost has changed. So now rather than reflecting an auto attack for a base damage, now for um, two thirds a second, she will Repost and she'll block all incoming damage and crowd control effects. She does stop herself from moving though. And then after the 0.75 seconds are up, uh, she'll throw back a skill shot in a little area and the first target it hits will be slowed and also be dealt magic damage going from 90 all the way up to 250 plus 100 percent bonus ap don't build ap fiora um and <laughs> be pretty she, hilarious though you just got like a ludens and you just you get hit and you snipe them yeah if she builds any uh sorry if she reflects any kind of immobilizing effect that stuns yep. uh snares any anything of the sort she will um Instead of slowing with the skill shot, she will stun. So if Morgana throws a binding at her, she blocks the binding and hits Morgana with the skill shot, Morgana will instead be stunned. Yep. Yeah. And Fiora like, will take I've just got the damage. Yeah, I've just got this image of uh Braum having a severe spell shield and then kicking their shield in their direction. That's <laughs> that's kind of like a combination of those abilities right there. <laughs> and stun when the shield hits. That's that's kind of how it plays just using existing mechanics is kind of a frame of reference and it looks pretty damn cool because fiora at the moment like before pre we work is all math like all of everything about her comes down to the numbers that appear on her page she's got an infinity edge or she's got like a crap load of attack speed and everything like that that is where she'll come from it's like okay i hit my alt i do all this dancing around and do a crap load of damage whereas this one has Sorry? I, I was going to say, I, was, I used to refer to her as the right-clicking champion. You'd walk yep. into a fight, yeah, absolutely. right-click, mm -hmm. and then walk away, make yourself a cup of tea, come back, uh, realize you're actually getting a little bit low. Not much, but a little bit low, because you like it <laughs> so much. And then you'd press the R button, and then finish your cup of tea, and then their nexus would explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the Lee Sin champion spotlight for April Fool's. Um, yeah, like, now she feels a lot more like a duelist. Like, she looks like what she should have been all along. Like, because the riposte was always kind of lame. Like, like, riposte in it's, its current almost form, impossible to hit as well. Yeah, like, and it was not worth hitting as well. Like, it's like, okay, so I've, like, if you were against another Fiora... Also, yeah. you know, someone with a very similar kit uh, to Fiora, it was, um, then it would then it would turn the tide of battle. But now the repost, yeah. she used to beat Gangplank <laughs> and no one else. Yeah, that's hilarious. Which wasn't yeah, it's now, not exactly the the highest ability. You can like that looks like it has a lot of team fighting potential, has a lot of laning potential, and it's a lot more thematic. Like it actually it actually looks like she's a duelist now as opposed to someone with a sword just attacking you know so um i think her people who can position extremely well in team fights or small skirmishes um 
and to very twitch reflexes are going to be freaking gods on this champion like mm. if you've like if like you're talking like top of the tier um you know highest reaction speed you could possibly get type people you can position yourself in a in a in a team fight break down to the percentage health while also ulting the right person that's getting low uh, then you kill them then you get the aoe heal and all whilst trying to stay alive through positioning now if you're very poor at positioning this champion is going to suck like and if you've got slow reaction time trying to get that repost to work nearly as effectively as it could in the hands of someone who's much faster it's go you're not going to have a good day you're going to blow your mana you're going to get stunned and you're going to whiff a skill shot you know so uh it's very very skill-based champion yeah. i would actually like to see uh a fiora versus uh not yorick what's his bloody name uh yasuo i think that just bouncing around reposting and all that i think that would be freaking cool i would love to see like the taste the wind like whatever is mm. whatever is uh to <laughs> rush of tornado whatever that was uh, but, yeah Yas yeah that's the one and then her to repost that and then just alt and kill him i love that that I, I want to see that someone out there red mercy someone out there yeah. with reaction speed able to do that do that so yeah. that i may enjoy <laughs> this rework has added something to Fiora's kit that Fiora has never had before, and that's a sense of skill. You did not need yeah. any kind of skill to play the old Fiora because the old Fiora played itself. Yeah. Especially, like, yeah, the absolutely. ultimate. Literally, you push the button and she starts dealing damage for a few seconds. Oh, I felt very good about my dueling and outplaying abilities by pushing the R button. <laughs> How excellent am I? Yeah, um, yeah she, she has very much gone from a right-clicking press the button to win or lose uh champion to someone that has a lot of potential to turn around situations that you might lose like this new kit that she has could very much be turned around when from behind whereas previously if you already got behind she was useless whereas the right timing on riposte and the correct positioning on the passive and the ultimate you could <laughs> hi tracy <laughs> uh <laughs> like you could turn a fight around with just the the true damage uh and just the additional just everything about her kit working correctly she's gonna she's she could be brilliant now yeah, she could be she i mean i think be, i think the, the, yeah. one of the issues is just that uh you know she's gonna struggle in a team fight situation and i mean yeah okay she's got repost but only for 0.75 of a second mm -hmm. and you know if she's gonna get cc'd much uh she's she's gonna have a very very hard time so she's a bit like a trend to me where you really gonna play her as a split pusher even though she's got an ult that heals yeah. you know either you blow somebody up immediately and then with, withstand the damage with the healing yeah or you uh you, you just can't wait into a team fight like she's no not no absolutely be, not yeah. and a lot of that is very much her kit is waiting for the correct moment to strike and having the right duelist footwork, i.e. Mm. teamfight positioning. Because yeah. you can, like, Fiora's in a teamfight will do very, very little. But once the teamfight starts, if she has correct positioning and she sees, like, a Morgana binding or a Nautilus hook or whatever coming yeah. in, she can turn that cooldown around on them and then take advantage of the, of the misplay that an enemy has made. And then you can, you'd have to back off or severe would have to alt and the rest of your team would have to cc them and stuff like it's all about picking your moments this yeah. kit like I, i've yeah. never really been much of a fiora fan but after watching these abilities and everything i think she could be cool now like again it'll yeah, come I think down to be cool. items like, I, I, and teams and all that sort of stuff but whether she'll be competitive oh yeah i, I, I think I she'd think be like a challenger level solo cure but not i don't think she fits many team comps that exist currently yeah um those weaknesses carrot mentioned i think are very crucial to have in her kit um because like if you couldn't stop her from proccing the vitals and you couldn't stop her from activating that ultimate it would be the most overpowered fucking champion in the game so yeah. like for auto attack based champions who are melee those kind of weaknesses need to hang around but they need small little ways to get around it which for master Yi is he can disappear from the map for when he all alpha strikes and start healing himself on the spot for a few seconds to block a bit of damage for her it's 
she blocks all damage and responds with a bit, and um, she gets the reward play of, yes, I killed the target, grand challenge is activated, I got the big heal, or something yeah. like that. I mean, I think in a, in a, in, in a sort of solo kill or normal sort of situation, uh, she's going to be difficult to deal with in a 1v1 situation. Like, that, that max health, true damage... You know, mm. starting off at 6%, like, that's a lot of damage. That's something she can just proc off basic attacks. Like and if she's every... dashing around all the time. Yeah, and yeah. Can't get a lockdown. <laughs> of it. So, I mean, I think that's going to be... I guess, like, in in that regard, she's a snowball champion like she was previously, which is you want to get get a bunch of early kills, you know, kick the crap out of your, the, the other top laner, and then proceed to just go and shred everybody else you come across. Like, you wouldn't want to... You know, essentially, you want a series of small engages across the map. Because, you know, she theoretically could, you know, 1v1, 1v2. You know, if, if she's moving through the jungle, she finds the jungler. Even if somebody else joins in, if she's she's that far ahead, she's going to be like old Fiora, which is, if you see her, you run. I mean, that's, yeah. that, was, that was what it was like, you know, in a solo queue situation where you don't have the coordination, you know she could snowball like crazy. And so I think I think that's very much in the same sort of vein. With that max health damage, like there's no one who's going to be able to withstand her damage. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's cool. It's good. It's good to have like a champion with a niche. And it's certainly her passive is a lot more fun than it was. Like to have something which was just like, you get bonus help HP regeneration. It's like lame like that was a terrible <laughs> passive um, it's not even a passive it's, so it's a stat that yeah it's just it's else. not fun and yeah. and so to have a yeah. fun thing like i think that's good i mean i, I think the numbers you know the the well they acknowledged that she came out in a weaker state because they've already buffed her with a hot fix and my from what i can see on reddit and other you know sites it seems that the general consensus is that she is a bit weak but that's something now that they've got a whole variety of sort of as they talk about levers, levers you know she's yeah. got all sorts of different ways you can balance her and to buff her in some areas yeah. and you know keep her reasonable in other ways so you know there's it's it's workable you can work with what's here to create a champion that's interesting and fun and maybe isn't even has competitive viability in the right circumstance yeah. i think the only issue with her because i agree that she's a little bit weak but i think the weakness is um just how hard it is to proc her passive because it's like positional like the visuals yeah. the visuals i don't feel the visuals match um the gameplay like yeah. ah, i should be proccing this passive but i'm not like i mentioned before if you're standing on the inside of fiora like if fiora is standing inside her target it doesn't register where the vital spot is properly which is um well if you think about it like because she's a fencing champion like she's a fencer and if yeah. you're too close to an enemy you're not able to do the whole stab thing that the whole that the weapon and the sport are based on so that makes sense if you think about it from a weapon standpoint like darius going i pull you in with my axe doesn't make sense but this yeah. kind of does you know um and it's a like, video like game I mean, steve it, it's a video yeah. game i mean i, like, I think the people... loss of the double the double lunge is a bit of an issue as well like i, I mean I, it's one of those things that maybe if she still could yeah. lunge twice, she'd be overpowered because then she can always get an angle on her weak on the weak spot. But maybe that's worth it. I mean, that that's the other thing. Like if you, maybe they could reconsider bringing that back because that would enable yeah, her to essentially just fine. go. You know, if she needs to get to the side, she can go forward to a minion and then down to lunge to the side. Um, the only um, the only situations which really a problem is it's on like the vitals on the far spot of the champion, and then yeah. in that situation is like, I just got to wait till it changes. Then yeah. You flash. Uh, yeah, totally I'm gonna flash worth. just hit the vital. That's it. Yeah. I'm wondering uh, how wide the the hitbox is essentially. Like if you've got No, I've realized that, but if you're on the very far yeah. left of the hitbox and you hit on an angle, does it still register? It or do you register. need to hit it? It's it um, doesn't it's really it's it, it's weird how it works. I can't explain it to you properly, but it doesn't feel right at times when you feel like you're hitting the hitbox, but you're not. Yeah, okay. Well, that's something you'll they have, can probably just to, you'll change to, the you'll visuals. You'll have to jump into a custom mode and have a play around with it for yourself because it feels really awkward at times. Okay, we'll have to give that a go. Uh, now, we didn't actually talk about blade work, <laughs> but uh, her, oh, yeah. e, uh, her E uh, resets her auto attack and, the first, and she gets two specialized attacks. The first one cannot crit, but it slows. So it'll slow them mm. for one second, and the second one is a guaranteed critical strike. And, um, yeah, bam. 
the second attack critically strikes. Yay. Yeah, it's good. I mean, uh, there is the, a reduction in the, the crit damage. Like the actual, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, as before you, yes, at, as you level it up, you remove the, like, there's like a percentage, yeah, like a percentage reduction. So at level one, there's a 60% damage reduction on the critical damage. So, which yeah. makes sense because you essentially don't want to be critting people for cr like crazy amounts at level one. That would just make yeah. it ridiculous. I mean, basically, we all know of situations where somebody's taken a 1% crit, uh, Mark, the crit rune. and they the yeah crit rune, and they crit just rune. and they just get somebody just by freak your yeah, fluke and it just completely turns a trade because crit damage even at level one is like is just ridiculous so yeah I, um, I, I played against a mun like the first time i came across the crit rune i was against a mundo yeah and he activated his e and got the lucky crit yeah and i'm like oh my god where's my health bar oh my, yeah. god, oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god what happened what was that why do you have a crit why do you crit yeah so uh yeah so i mean it's, it's, it's interesting like uh and it also has an auto attack reset i think that's probably its biggest power is it gives you an auto attack reset um yeah well, so you I said you can get three attacks off in very rapid succession which is going to be huge yeah. for trades the way i was using it was i'd dash to the first vital bam hit it and then i'd instantly reset the auto attack for a slow and then i'd move to the next one for the crit yep so that's yes. how I was using it, but. And then you do, I mean, that's like at least 12% max health damage. Just gone. 10% of the health is just gone. Like that's, that's nasty. Mm. Um, with no defense. Yeah, with no defense. Um, how about that? She... Cool. Well, anything else anybody wants to say about Fiora? Because I think we, we don't really have time for other patch notes. So I think. No, we'll, no. I there's think nothing else to say. It. We'll finish it at that. Yeah, no, I'm very, um, I'm very I'm, pleased I'm very to say that Rito did a good job. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good to, good to see how, how it all goes. Um, a toxic champion is now... Uh, a once toxic champion has now seen a change for the better. I'm happy to say that because I used to complain about it all the time on the Victor show. Yeah, actually, I need to maybe track down to see what uh, Greg Sky Williams thinks because that was always the champion he hated on as well, was Fiora. Yeah. I hate on a lot of champions, Carrot, let's be honest. It's true, it's true. Even more I than don't. me. I hate I'm on starting to so I'm starting to run out works. now. The only <laughs> thing I'm ang the only thing I'm angry about is I'm starting to run out of champions to hate. I still hate Nidalee, and I'll probably hate Nidalee forever. Yes. I'm really down to Friggin Echo space. and Yasuo at the moment. This is crazy. Well, you know, they got the they got the Tarak rework on its way by the end of the year. It's gonna be Scion level, so that'll give you something to whinge about. So I'm so angry. I'm going to be so angry. I'm going to be so happy. There'll be another tanky champion I can play in the bottom lane. You can um, play him now, you asshole. No, oh you God. can't. He's so you bad. Can't. I literally he went is into so a game bad. Day and carried so hard. He's an awful champion. Oh, and you're a terrible person no. for saying that he's good. <laughs> well, we my all win know rate with human Tarek testimony is the most reliable. My win rate with Tarek does not reflect that of a bad champion. Don't, don't do it, people. Just don't. <laughs> just, just don't. Just the desperation in, in Victor's yeah. body language. He wants to justify And just the disapproval in carrots. Don't feed into his neuroses. <laughs> Fine, if none of you want to play... Look, Riot Games, just give me and only me access to old Tarek forever. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And you can just make a new champion and call him Tariq or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> Tariq. Uh, uh, and and give me a Carthus skin that looks <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah. If we're, if we're doing visuals. requests, I want my old skin back. And I want I want old locket of the skins. I want old the colors back. Old locket of the Iron Solari, which was you know uh, the built out of the <laughs> the uh, bulwark. <laughs> no yeah no not bull, no. Well, before it got turned into an upgrade for uh, for for Aegis of Legion, it was a great item. It was like. Uh, it was uh, a Kindle gem, and then like uh, I think armor, and then like a regen bead, and it was awesome. Wow! Because well, it was cheap, so, and it was it was health, items, it was health, uh, armor, and and CDR on a tanky and a shield on a tanky gem. It was like I'd, it was first buy every time I, I, I play. It, like, well, I'd bring first back buy. that health and manna regen item that built out a philosopher's stone and would just disappear stone, after yeah. three levels, and you just have the oh, item. Yeah. As a uh, Elysia's miracle, or what it was called. I used to fucking build that thing all the time. I was like, why wouldn't anyone build this? It's a free item. We'll bring back innovating locket. 
<laughs> well, if I was gonna like, I know we're getting sidetracked here, but if I was, yeah, gonna we, gotta, we got a couple item, of minutes to burn, so you might as well like go completely off the rails. No, no, I would bring back Force of Nature. The move, oh, was it the movement speed? Uh, yeah, health massive percentage. A- a- MR. Yeah, oh, I loved that item. That was such a good, like, when that item was removed, it was removed around the same time as the original Heart of Gold. Yeah, uh, I think they took it out for season three. Yeah, like, that's when they got rid of that, and Shen's just options plummeted. And, yeah. <laughs> like, and other people, like Mundo, who, who do really well with the Spirit Visage became gods compared yeah. to him i'm like oh but well, Shen's i'm really back glad i mean now, with, so. well, something we were, we were going to talk about we didn't get to was the, these ju- these uh, new items on the pbe so it's nice to actually see a bunch of tanky items new tanky items because we mm. haven't actually seen that Oops. many i mean barbie What's cinder i guess man, was dead, dead man's plate, plate yep which is the exact same ingredients as the old sunfire cape recipe yeah chain vest giant's belt build the dead man's plate for 2750 yeah <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, it's nice to see some like new tank items. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, Titanic Hydra looks pretty overpowered though. Yeah, yeah. Stupid. I don't know if anyone's anyway, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that next week. So, um, because we've Dead we've actually at the end of time. Yeah, and we've right out of time. Not the end of time. The end of time would be the end of the universe, and that would be. Thank you, end. everybody, for listening to the <laughs> Oslo podcast. We're all out of life now. The universe. We're well, all out of Ranconius. I'm all out of Ranks dead, baby. Ranks I'm dead. So I'm so lost without you. you. See, it's that's my tribute to, uh, yeah. to Rank Copious. Randomly bursting into song. Oh, well, I'll, I'll find like some sort of love song dedication for Franconius, just specifically for him. I'll, I'll break my no cop, like, no copyright breaches rule just to find something that's like good on you, and then announce you. it so you can't even deny. It. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you were doing it unknowingly. Good on oh. you. <laughs> all right, that's it. Episode ninety-seven. We're done. We're all tired. We're all going and doing other things. Ooh, Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in next week. Games. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen.